Hey guys, Harrison one back at it once again with a brand new video for you and welcome to part 11 of our FIFA 12 Road to the Championship. Bit of a special episode, this is it's another transfer deadline day, so I'm going to play through that live as it happens. Well, not really live, but I, I kept the whole unedited transfer deadline day in there. And then highlights from the League Cup game I played against Wolverhampton Wanderers. I also make two signings in this window, a Ghanaian midfielder and a French striker. Check the video for who. But, um... In the meantime, I'm going to talk about some real-life footballing transfers that were taking place. Obviously, the transfer window that transfer window opened up three weeks ago now, and we've seen some big money exchanged for players so far in this window. So I thought, let's have a talk about, them. let's grade some of these transfers, and let me talk about some of these very, very big signings that have taken place in this window so far. One of the very first deals that was taking place in the window was Barcelona signing the left back um, Jordi Alba from Valencia. Five-year deal, £11.5 million. I instantly gave this an A+. I mean, if you think about it, if there's one thing Barcelona are shaky on, it was their defence last season. They, they did give up a fair few more goals than Real Madrid did. I think you got to notice is that especially at the left-back position, they were struggling. Um, Eric Abadal, obviously, very ill um, for numerous reasons. And he had to, obviously he had to retire at the end of last season. Obviously that's quite sad. But they've managed to find a fantastic plug-in replacement in Jordi Alba from Valencia. A guy who used to play for Barcelona. Knows the system. Knows the team. Knows the players. Knows the style. Had a superb Europe, um, Euro 2012 campaign. Was excellent for Spain. One of their best players. Um, see, He can immediately come into that team. Come right in at left back. Play that offensive fullback role very similarly to um, Danny Alves on the right hand side, and I think that that's, gonna, that's just the kind of thing that's going to make the whole team better immediately. So I gave this an A plus. I mean, he, I think he's already a world class left back. Could be one of the best in the world in the next two to three years, up there with the Philip Lahms, the Danny Alveses, and the Ashley Coles of the world. Um, I think Alba's already knocking on that door. So that's a great transfer from them. Uh, moving along, Shinji Kagawa from Borussia Dortmund to Manchester United for £13 million. I'm a bit biased here as a Manchester United fan, but I've got to give this one an A as well. Um, Kagawa is another guy that Manchester United really needed, and that was an attacking midfielder. And he is just the kind of guy United would need. I mean, they've already, they already like their Oriental players. They work hard. Kagawa's a very cool guy, very humble. Um... Perfect for the, you know, the Manchester United kind of mould of attitude a player needs to be there. And United, Manchester United have already got a ton of creative talent. They have Nani, they have Valencia, they have Ashley Young, Wayne Rooney, um, Chikorito. They have a lot of talented, skilled players. So Kagawa coming in as an attacking midfielder will instantly boost the team's creativity even further. So if anything, it's a really smart signing and very good value as well to get a guy of Kagawa's quality for just £13 million. So I'm giving this one a great A. Um, next up, Chelsea signing left winger Eden Hazard from Lille for £32 million. £38 if you include the £6 million to his agent. It seems to be Chelsea that's going after the whole Hazard family right now, which is quite peculiar. Anyway, Eden Hazard is one of the best winger prospects in world football. He had 20 goals and 18 assists last season for Lille. Um, I've got a feeling Chelsea are going to be running a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 next season. It was an interesting move mainly because he's similar to Mata, who's also a left winger, but I've got a feeling they're going to push Mata to play down the middle in a more of an attacking midfielder kind of role. They're still short on a right winger, but they're already gunning for guys like Victor Moses as well that could play on that right wing from Wigan uh, and Hulk as well from Porto. But this is a gamble to spend on a guy like Hazard. He's, he's £32 million. Pounds. He's only 21. He, yes, he's got a fair bit of professional experience underneath his belt. But at the same time, one also has to be concerned. That's a lot of money to run out on a guy that's still a prospect. Hasn't played at the very highest level yet, really, on a consistent basis. And Chelsea is a team that, you know, you expect should be right up there in terms of football. I mean, they are the reigning Champions League winners. So... Will spending that kind of money on a guy like Hazard work out, or will it be another one of Roman Abramovich's expensive busts? You know, Andrei Chevchenko springs to mind. Fernando Torres being 50 million springs to mind. And Hazard could easily be in that mould as well, but at the same time, he could be their future left winger for the next 10 years. So I'm giving this one a grade B, 
risky due to the fee, but there's still a lot of upside in Eden Hazard. Um, PSG, the first of three big signings from them are going to be the last ones I'll cover in this episode. I mean, I'm planning to do more than one of these, by the way, so stay tuned. If a guy didn't get mentioned on this one, I'll definitely mention him in the next episode. But um, PSG signing Ezekiel Levesi from Napoli, four years for 23.75 million. Another grade B on this one. I'm not 100% convinced on Ezekiel Levesi. He had a great season last year, had double-digit goals and assists, um, 11 goals, 11 assists last year for, for Napoli. But the transfer is, is around £24 million, pounds, and that's a lot to spend on a winger who is 27 years old. He may be entering his prime now, but his window may also be starting to close at that age. I like him a lot, but at this price, he has to be the finished article or he's going to be a bust. However, what's helping him is that Eden Hazard is a creative winger, and, that was, and he was able to tear French defences apart, and Ezekiel is, is, is probably better than Eden Hazard. So, if anything, Vezzi should be able to do something in a very similar mould as to what um, Eden Hazard was able to do for Lille. So, I'm giving that one a grade B. It's a, it's a smart-ish transfer, but for his age, he's going to be the, the finished guy now, rather than someone they're hoping will get better in two to three years' time. And finally, let's quickly talk about the, the, the big one. The Zaltan Ibrahimovic and, and Thiago Silva from AC Milan double 51.6 million pound deal. Yeah, no doubt about it. PSG will just go in absolutely to town on this one. They don't want to win the league in three to five years' time. They want to win it now. Hence why they've made a mega play for one, arguably one of the top three centre-backs and top three strikers in the world. Even though they're 30 and 27. Remember, AC Milan turned down a £37.5 million offer for Zaltan just last week. Hence, they're only valuing him at £14 million. Sorry, hang on. The £37.5 million offer was for Silva. Sorry. Um, anyone who's followed Zaltan's career would tell you that his club loyalty is not his thing. He rotates from club to club and aligns himself with winners. This year was the first in nearly a decade where he was on a team that didn't win their respective league title. Thiago Silva is one of the most complete centre-backs in the world today. Stri speed, strength, power, he's got everything. And he'll have his national partner Alex to play with, the former Chelsea centre-back. For an average £25.75 million if you add the two teams together and the medium together, you'll get three to four years of elite level defence. Zaltan is more iffy, his work rate is questionable as is his attitude. If PSG don't end up winning anything next season, we need to prepare, prepare to wait it out. Not to mention he's now on the not-so-bright side of 30. It's a great short-term transfer, but he's prepared to wait um, if, if things don't turn out right. AC Milan's having a, having a 65 million euro cash injection is nice, but at the same time they've got to put a lot of that money back into their defence. Hopefully Rubinho, El Shirari and Pato can step up to the mark in his absence. I gave AC Milan a grade D for the transfer because it's their two best players, really. And PSG a, P, a B minus. Let me know what you think of some of these transfers in the comments below. If there are any ones you want me to talk about in the next FIFA Road to the Championship, again, let me know. But in the meantime, I've been Harrison101. Like, comment, favorite, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Sayonara.